Hi, my name is James Bezik. I'm a senior developer advocate here at AWS Serverless. And today I'm going to talk about Amazon EventBridge and how it can help simplify your application architecture. EventBridge can help with several common problems in distributed architecture. The first is tight coupling. Companies of all sizes are starting to move from the monolith to a microservices model. But often the interactions and tight coupling between those microservices tend to also look fairly monolithic. Let me show you what I mean. This is a standard synchronous API. I'm sure we've all written plenty of these. In this case, a client makes a request to an order service, which then turns around to a downstream service called an invoice service. And then that does some work and returns a 201 to show it's been successful, and then returns that back to the client. Now, this works fine when you've got a very simple system like this. It looks decoupled, and it's really two separate systems. But what happens when we add more services that integrate with the order service? The order service has more responsibilities. Downstream services publish an API, and the order service becomes responsible for talking to each of them. The order service has to understand retry semantics for each service and bundle an SDK for each. Any backwards incompatible changes to the APIs, and it's on the hook for the order service team to update them. Long term, more systems out there need data from the order service. And in this model, those teams are blocked by the order service team to implement. They cannot operate independently as they once could, and there's friction in the process due to the integration cost of hooking services together. Now, the decoupling is gone, and dependencies are much more fragile. And this is a common pattern. Systems start in a decoupled way and trend back to being tightly coupled. Here's the second issue. As APIs develop into complex workflows, it can be difficult to make sure each service has the right state. I'll explain. Here's a simple e-commerce application. In the happy path, everything works as expected. The order service triggers invoicing and payment systems and then updates the forecasting service. Once the payment clears, this triggers the fulfillment and packing of the order. Finally, fulfillment informs the shipping service to request tracking information. But what happens if the fulfillment center cannot find the product because they're out of stock? The fulfillment team may have to alert the invoice service and then reverse the payment or issue a refund or a partial credit. The shipping service may have already been triggered, so the invoice service sends a message to update the status. And the forecasting service may not accept this kind of update, so now the numbers are incorrect and require manual adjustment. Here's another common situation. Imagine your team works on a payment service, but you weren't told that another service, a reward service, was added. What happens in this case when the fulfillment service errors? Well, the fulfillment maybe orchestrates all the other services, and your payments team gets a message. You undo the payment, but then the shipping is canceled, and it all looks correct, but at the end, the reward service never finds out. So the reward service thinks that they integrated correctly with the order service, but a canceled order results in a reward for a customer account, and that definitely wasn't the intention. Now what happens if the reward service changes vendors and adds a new API? Is this something that other services know about? Here's another major issue. Let's talk about availability in these systems. Back to our ordering system, where your team is managing payments, there are a couple of potential problems. The first is performance mismatch. It takes longer to process payments than accept orders. So in busy periods, the slower performance of the payment service is holding up the order service, and customers experience delays. In synchronous APIs, putting a fast service in front of a slower one tends to lead to problems. Here's another problem with outages. If the payment service goes down, the order system also goes down. The availability metrics for the total service are worse because these systems are interdependent. A downstream failure appears as a total failure for the end user. So how can the Amazon EventBridge help with these problems? Well, events are central to EventBridge, and events are observable and not directed. The previous tightly coupled APIs used directed commands, whereas an event-driven approach is observable. What's the difference? Well, in a command model, each command is explicitly issued to a specific recipient. So here, the person on the left says, please create an invoice, and the person on the right hears that and takes action. Events, on the other hand, are merely observable by other systems. So in this case, the person on the left says, customer X just ordered a widget. A person at the back hears that and says, I will add that to a sales report. 
Another person hears it and decides to add it to an invoice, and two other people hear it but take no action. The benefits of this are that event producers don't need to have any knowledge about who's listening to these events, and this keeps them simple. It allows other services to consume events without needing upstream changes. That's great, but how do we actually implement all of this? How do we pass information from the order service to all these downstream systems without calling them directly? Well, for that, we need an event bus. This provides an endpoint where an event producer can send events. The router manages directing and filtering those events to the appropriate downstream consumers. Consumers can get the events they care about reliably while the producers remain decoupled. So our architecture now looks like this. The order service sends events to the bus, which is configured with rules that determine which downstream systems get the event. Now some targets will care about only certain events, while others will want to see all the events. Either way, the router now takes on the complexity of ensuring that these events get propagated appropriately to each downstream service. Back in our example with an event bus decoupling the architecture, it looks similar, but now if the fulfillment service has an error, it simply raises an error event. This is caught by other services that are listening and can take action accordingly. And in the other problem example, where a reward service is added, for another team to consume some order service events, they simply add a new rule to the bus. There's no need to wait on the order service team to make an update for them. Now service teams can act much more independently and move faster. This is Amazon EventBridge. It's a serverless event bus service. It helps you ingest and route events from SaaS applications, AWS services, and your own systems. Some of the notable features include the fact that it's serverless, so there's no infrastructure to manage or provision. Scaling is handled for you, and you only pay for what you use. It offers native integrations with 21 SaaS providers with more to come. Traffic travels internally within AWS infrastructure when you work with SaaS providers instead of on the public internet. It integrates with over 90 AWS services as sources and 17 services as targets. And it costs $1 per million events. There's no charge for events sourced from AWS services or for the delivery of events. So I've covered a few of the common challenges in managing distributed systems of microservices. EventBridge can help to make sure that your application remains decoupled. APIs and webhook mechanisms tend to lock you into a more rigid, monolithic state, even in separate services. An event bus can help keep these services decoupled, even as your systems become more complex and as new versions of your services are launched. It provides simplified event routing. The happy path works well, but handling error states can be difficult to orchestrate. An event bus can help manage errors across multiple workflows and ensure that services remain simple, only listening to events that they care about and only being responsible for creating events. EventBridge can also improve availability. In synchronous APIs, the availability of the entire system can be impacted by the failure of any single service. Moving towards an asynchronous infrastructure based around events allows more resilience and with the right architecture design can improve availability. Finally, third-party integration is available. Instead of using polling or webhooks, you can ingest data seamlessly and in near real time using events. EventBridge offers SaaS integrations with a growing number of providers that can treat new data in these systems as events. EventBridge is designed to help you address some of the common architectural pitfalls of distributed systems and also help simplify your serverless systems architecture. To learn more, visit aws.amazon.com forward slash eventbridge. Thanks for joining me for this brief overview. Happy coding.